So a very warm welcome to Jessica Spina, Head of IR and Head of Corporate Strategy at Mediobanca. Um, let me start, first of all, by saying congratulations to the fantastic achievement in the Europe Executive Team Survey 2020 in the SMITCAP in the banking sector. What a fantastic achievement, all top rankings across the different um, voting categories. Um, Jessica, share with us your views uh, on the importance of the awards and the rankings to you and your management, please. Thank you, Romani. It's really a pleasure for me to be with you and uh, uh, today. Um, for us, the awards was a great satisfaction. Uh, really great at board level first, at CEO level, and uh, for us, the IR team. And what is really important for me, being the head of the team, is that uh, we want not only a singular person, but as a team. That doesn't mean that we are effectively uh, working well together, and this is quite, quite important. Yes, definitely. We've obviously all gone through a really tough year, um, very unprecedented, very unusual. Um, share with us a little bit the practical measures you have taken to overcome those challenges. How did you continue engagement with investors and the market? The first source of Mediobanca was to put all our employees in uh, the condition to work safely at home and to be strictly in contact with our customers. Uh, even if uh, we were in lockdown, even remotely and so on. And this has been a big effort, just two numbers. We move in three weeks from 500 to 5,000 people work remotely. And so for us, a big jump. And um, I think that this really help us in uh, uh, being uh, in strict contact with our, all our stakeholders, not, not only shareholders, all stakeholders. Um, and just to give you a number, we reached the peak of the meetings that we have in one year, more than 1,000 meetings in 12 months. This is obviously the effort of the crisis because during the crisis, the bad times, you have to be closer to your stakeholders, but also the results of uh, all the efforts that we did to use the remote channels to be in contact with all our stakeholders. Mm -hmm. um, and I have to say something that we will save also in the future when we will uh, finally and hopefully we will come back to the new normal. Yes, definitely. Um, ESG has also gained uh, in momentum during the crisis. It's something that is obviously of growing importance uh, in terms of investor engagement as well. Share with us a little bit about the structure in, in your company. How do you approach ESG? How do you gain alignment with investors on, on metrics? A very important question. Thank you, Mani. Yes, ESG has been... Uh, um, increasing more and more the, the role and importance across our uh, uh, bank. Um, we started maybe later than other peers, uh, but we tried at least to start effectively. Um, in, uh, in, at governance level, we have two bodies, uh, one at managerial level, chaired by the CEO, Mr. Nagel, the CEO of the bank, and involving the head of every department in the bank and at group level. So we are talking about the head of the staff, but also the head of the businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have a board uh, committee um, specifically engaged for the ESG topics, again, charged by the CEO with four board members uh, involved. And last but not least, we have a specific department, ESG department, made up by three colleagues that are working exclusively on the ESG topics. So um, ESG is um, really an intrinsic value in our uh, strategy. Um, we, in the last business plan that we approved, we clearly set ESG targets, ESG roadmap, and these targets are annually uh, included in the scorecards of the top management. So is, I would say, a really important matter. Yes, definitely. Um, we've recently actually conducted a poll with investors and corporates um, to understand what the market sentiment with regards to activism is. Um, and we understand from the investors that actually they expect an increase over the next six to 12 months. Corporates are not so prepared when it comes to activism and, and, and a strategy in place. You have now gone through uh, personally such an experience. Perhaps you can share with us some of the key takeouts and, and challenges and how did you overcome those challenges? 
Yes, we we touch with our hands. <laughs> what does it mean to be involved in a fight with an activist? In the late in the, the last AGM we had in uh, October 20, we had an activist proposing a different board uh, list um, in the AGM. Um, and it's true, corporate are not prepared, are not prepared for too many reasons, I think. Uh, at least from my experience. First, because we are used to have a storytelling, a set of information, a way of doing, and we are uh, we usually propose to institutional investors, credit equity, ESG, uh, our storytelling. Why, when you have an activist, you have to completely change eyes, and you have to look at yourself with their eyes, and you have to um, not to propose your storytelling, but to answer and to, uh, let's say, defend what you're doing, why you are doing this and so on. Um, and the second thing is that the tone, um, you know, the dialogue is not the usual one because often they are unconstructive, let's say. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they try to be provocative. And so you have to uh, be very calm. You must exercise your self-control. And it's something that, that we usually have, but you never realize that the tone at which you humanly communicate is completely different. Seems normal, but it isn't. Mm -hmm. And so is that the content and the way of communication are completely different when you have a, 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 I cannot say all the activists, at least some activists in your uh, in your AGM or uh, finding with you. Mm -hmm. and, and actually the fact that you are talking, we are talking about a fight. Mm -hmm. A fight in AGM is not a collaboration, a constructive dialogue, it's a fight. And this is a completely different thing. Mm, yeah, very interesting. But it's a great experience. The learning curve is <laughs> really strong. Yeah, I can I can imagine. Um, you've obviously been in investor relations for a number of years now. And as you know, investor relations is impacted by various external factors, but also regulatory changes. Where do you see the trends in investor relations and how may that impact the actual strategic function? I, I think that looking forward, um, my role will be impacted by two things. First, we must uh, think about the fact that to be involved in special situation will become more and more frequent. And so um, we have to learn what does it mean to be involved in a deal, an m &A deal, as a target, as a bidder, to be involved in a fight with an activist, uh, the COVID crisis, uh, we have, I think, as uh, an effect or a consolidation throughout sectors, at least in Europe. And so this spatial situation will become less uh, unfrequent, let's say. So we have to develop more competences and different uh, style of communication because communicating financial results or the KPIs for a bid or for M&A or style or not is a diff completely different thing. Mm. Um, and the other thing is that, um, you know, uh, I've been in this role for you know, 15 years, so a, lo a lot of time. And I'm working in finance for the last 25 years. So again, a lot of time. At the very beginning, uh, this job was only equity then become with the sovereign crisis and uh, the Italian sovereign crisis and the Lehman crisis, credits has get a lot of training. So we have to develop specific topics, specific roadshows, specific section in the website for credit. And now the ESG is becoming more and more important as well. And so also the competences that we have across the three main areas and the different situation in which we can be involved uh, and now quickly uh, developing. Mm, yeah, very well. Uh, you've just mentioned obviously um, uh, your background, you were an MNA, you were also on the sell side. Now in IR, there's a lot of information uh, that you've been gathering over the years. What would you say now, having been in IR for over 15 years, what are the absolute must haves for you to run uh, a successful IR program as you have in the past, obviously given the results that you've achieved in the surveys consistently? 
um, has head of IR by definition, I think, uh, different experience and so uh, multidiscipline um, approach, uh, sure, by definition. And um, and if, if I may, I, I would like to give some tips to all IR, especially the women one, because I think that in these fields, maybe we are the majority. Um, be aware first of our value, our commitment, our knowledge. Mm -hmm. And be aware is the one most important thing. Mm -hmm. And the second is to play the same role the men play by. And so um, show your results, uh, show your performance. Don't wait to be discovered by someone else. Uh, otherwise, we will, uh, you know, spend our life in waiting to be discovered. Um, and share your life, um, uh, work life project. Uh, your partner, our partner must be uh, proud of our success and our company must to be focused on our performance, not where we are. Mm -hmm. And this is quite important. And last but not least, uh, uh, get fun, be light, uh, because uh, workout is important, but also to be excited and to train, you know, big satisfaction from our job. Yes, that very well. Um, now we're going to switch gear a little bit, Jessica, and we're going to um, move on to some other questions. So I hope you play along. Uh, my first yeah. question to you, um, do you have a favorite band or singer? Ah, the Coldplay. I love Coldplay so much. <laughs> Very good. And do you have a favorite quote that you use in life? Yes, I have a my mother quote in which I believe so much. It is the best is the enemy of good things. And so that means, at least in Italy, is very well known this, uh, this quote that means uh, try to do things, don't wait to be perfect or that things are perfect. Try and you will adjust and you know um, perform better and better doing things. Yeah, yeah. How does Jessica Spina relax? How do you relax, Jessica? Uh, doing sport. I think you know. Um, I I have also three children, and so we a very exciting world along with a big family, and I relax with them. But I relax a lot moving let's say my body dancing when it's possible, skiing, <laughs> swimming, walking. And so, uh, yes, doing sport. Oh, lovely. And do you have a resolution for 2021 or a personal objective? Yes, I have. It could seem strange after one year that we worked from home, <laughs> but I would like to have, um, let's say, a more balanced work job equilibrium because uh, uh, this the smart work thing is very effective is very efficient but uh, is 100 percent of my time now at home and so i i i want next years to be more equilibrated uh, in the in the in, in the approach of the work by home Yes, very good. Well, thank you very much for the interview, Jessica Spina, Head of IR and Corporate Strategy for Medio Banca. Again, congratulations for the uh, success in the 2020 Europe Executive Team, where you placed an overall first rank um, across all the different voting categories. Um, and I hope to see you in Milan this year, if possible. Yes, <laughs> hopefully. Thank you, Amani. Really a pleasure. Thank you so much.